Hey guys, it's Rory and today I've got another KSP video, the same shuttle back again. I did forget actually, I need to put the thrust limiters on these engines to full. Um, but yeah, we're back with the space shuttle and I've fixed it I guess a little bit, made it a little bit better, um, added some reaction wheels to the shuttle, a couple more parachutes here and there. And yeah, we should actually be good to go. So I'm going to throttle up and turn on the SAS. I've launched this once with these design changes and it was absolutely fine, so I'm going to try again. Got the same crew because they seemed to be able to pilot it fairly well last time. And uh, yeah, the reason I actually made the videos about this is just because they should be more viable. But it is frustrating that we still don't have a really good way of holding cargo. We don't have like a stock cargo bay which would be really cool as an addition to the game, I think, and something which I know I would really like and I'd use a lot. Um, so I don't know exactly what sizes they'd implement them in and things, but if they could even just add one that was like acted as one of these parts here, then I'd be happy. Um, because a cargo bay would then allow you these to actually be that much more useful. Anyway, it looks like... Um, getting up to a reasonable altitude now and the SRBs are going to start overpowering everything else you can see the RCS thrusters having to kick in which is fine because they're about to run out of fuel as well those SRBs and they've sort of started our gravity turn off for us so that's all okay and they cut out and then you can split them off make sure they don't hit the wings and then we can turn the RCS off again because we don't need that and now it's time to pitch over to the sort of 45 degrees um, to start that gravity turn off properly. Now we've got a lot of upwards velocity, we're absolutely fine for that, so we need to sort of get some horizontal velocity. And I can pitch over a little bit more than I would with a rocket, just because the engines are angled. So this direction here isn't actually the direction we're thrusting in, that's the direction we are pointing in because these engines are sort of not pointing in the same direction as the capsule that's pointing, if that makes sense. And there we go. Um, yeah, these are running out of fuel. That's fine. So now I can start to look into the map view for a little bit. And uh, I think balance-wise at the moment we're pretty good still. It's trying to pitch itself you know, back up towards pointing straight up. But that's absolutely fine. Um, and yeah, now we just need to go horizontally, now that we're out the thick part of the atmosphere. And um, the atmosphere probably isn't even causing us that much drag now. Uh, especially, you know, we're pretty much getting to the point where it's negligible. Um, so we can really start to go for it horizontally. And try and get this orbit as stretched out as possible. And it's at this point where we can gently start to spin the whole thing around um, because negative G's for the Kerbals isn't a problem anymore because we're not really pulling any negative G's and it just means that this thing is going to um, push itself up instead of pushing itself down which is good and um, so now it's starting to pull up again that's why I span around then because I'd prefer it to pull up than to pull down. I think that's a bit easier to control. Anyway, let's really try and get this um, this apoapsis up now before we run out of fuel or something. Because the orbit's already really elongated, it's just not that eccentric. We don't have the, um, the apoapsis quite where we need it yet. But that's fine, it's getting there. Getting there very fast, actually. <laughs> um, and we just want to get it to maybe 80 kilometers. There we go. So now we're done with this tank, I'm gonna split it off and shut down three engines at the back. I need to make action groups for this. And then I can just burn a little bit with our orbital maneuvering engine things until we get pushed away from that fuel tank. So now it's time to time warp. And uh, wait till we get to space, basically. And this should be a fairly easy thing to do now. From now, um, the most difficult bit of the mission is probably getting, you know, landing at the runway. Now, uh, we should be okay. Uh, I'm gonna point.
point it in the right direction now. And you can see it's a lot it's a lot more nimble now because of the uh what would you say? The reaction wheels, that's the one. So I'm just gonna throttle it up and start circularizing already. There's not much point in not doing that. And I'm burning downwards a little bit just so that this doesn't get pushed too far away from us. Because if I burn up, then our apoapsis will end up over here somewhere. Whereas if I burn down, it's going to pull it towards us. And it's still bringing up our periapsis as well. You just can't see that yet. So I'm just trying to build up horizontal velocity and reduce vertical velocity. Basically. And there we go. There's our uh, periapsis appearing. Um, and now I can start to pull up a little bit more. And you can see this oxidizer thing, that's like an accurate measurement of how much liquid f or how much fuel we have because the liquid fuel one it thinks it has more capacity because these carry liquid fuel. Anyway, that is now um, done. So we are in orbit, we can EVA a Kerbal, maybe that's EVA Jebediah. Let them have a little bit of fun probably quite boring launching something that's safe for him. Let's take a screenshot, shall we? Hmm, how do we want to line this up? Kind of like that. There we go. And if you want to take screenshots for yourself, then you just hit F2 and that... Um, so you can pause and then hit F2 and the game pauses. But I'm just going to hit F2 because I want Jebediah's mouth to be open. And then I can hit F12 because I've got Steam. And it should take the screenshot. There we go. He looks like he's having fun though, Jeb. And then uh, it's middle mouse button and then move around your mouse to sort of move the camera around. There you go few pro tips for taking screenshots. Anyway, um, there we go. We have boarded again and gone about a sixth of the way more around the world. <laughs> I'd like to do this in the real scale solar system, that would be fun. But uh, yeah, I, the realism overhaul I still I'm not 100% convinced by it. Um, first of all, it's a, quite a bit of a pain to install, but secondly, it is um, you know very very it's like almost overly complicated. I find to the point where it's just frustrating because you think oh yeah I've forgotten that and you end up launching something 20 times before you even have built it right, and then you realise it doesn't have enough delta v or something like that. So anyway, now I'm burning retrograde so that we can actually land at the KSC <laughs> and there's the carrier that we have splashed down from a couple of episodes ago and now I just need to keep burning until this gets a bit closer to here So I'm going to guess about there. Okay, and then we can spin ourselves around using some RCS. And then nose down, and then time warp, and then you can see as we go around the nose isn't quite so down anymore. And now we've started to hit the atmosphere, so I'm going to stop time warping just so that I can point us in about the right direction, then start time warping again. And uh, I don't want to shut down the engines just in case, because we might use them, we never know. Uh, we are coming down maybe a little bit too close, but at least we're over land rather than over the ocean, which is, I guess, a priority, as this thing would have a lot of trouble landing in the ocean. Or on the ocean. 
That would be an interesting idea, see if I can build a boat that can fly, or a plane that can land on water, basically. And there we go. This actually looks like it's going to work out reasonably well. So obviously this is 4 times time warp, it looks a lot faster than it actually is. But yeah, that was judged fairly well. Um, I don't think we're going to need... Okay, so now I'm going to stop time warping, for now at least, just so that I can point us a bit more in the right direction. Then I'm going to start time warping again. And don't worry that we're falling a bit too much now, the, you know, that's okay because once we get to the thicker part of the atmosphere we'll have a little bit more authority over where we go. And you can see there's the parachutes that I put on for landing. So now I can start to really pitch up a little bit, and I'll actually pitch up. Um. Oh, okay, maybe RCS isn't a good idea. <laughs> Backflip. That was pretty badass. And my phone is ringing. Sorry about the noise, if you can hear it. You might not be able to, actually. Um, my microphone's generally pretty good at keeping that kind of noise away. But yeah, I think at least we maybe kept Je uh, Jeb a bit more happy with that bit of... Um, that little backflip there. Anyway, I'm going to use a little bit of fuel here. May as well. Because of that backflip, I don't think we can quite make it <laughs> without fuel. But we're okay. I mean, in NASA, they probably have some kind of, um, you know, calculator for making the landing actually perfect, whereas I'm just winging it. And we're going to need to pull up so we don't hit this. That's a bit close for my liking, really. Maybe a little bit more thrust. Oh, we're out of fuel. Well, we've got to do it on... No power at all. I don't think we can make this, to be honest. Let's just give it a bit of RCS. Oh, actually might have worked. How much mono propellant do we have? Probably enough. Mm, maybe, maybe not. Let's just give it a nice gentle landing here, and we can roll it up there so it looks like we landed it properly later on. Anyway, uh, I want to try these parachutes out. Oh, <laughs> that didn't work. Apparently those don't work, so I'll have to take those off. But at least we got brakes. And uh, yeah, not quite at the space center, but close enough. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you liked the video, as always, if you did then give it a thumbs up and a favour, and have a nice day.